Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Today's episode is brought to you by cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to cars.com. It's magical. Hello, friends. Kirk Henderson and Josh Bo coming to you on Christmas night, probably six or seven hours after the Dallas Mavericks defeated the Los Angeles Lakers 124 to 115. How are you, Josh? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I think this is a f- this was a fun game, and it's good to see the Mavericks win a game on national TV when everyone's watching and after a Dirk celebration, uh, which they seem to be pretty good at now. They seem, yep. they seem to be good at performing well whenever they honor Dirk. So let's just maybe do it a couple more times uh, this season. Well, so before we talk about the game, I do think we should just talk. Like uh, We got to the statue a little bit because I did the live show right after. Like Everybody, everybody kind of rightfully beats up mark cuban a little bit on some of the stuff that he does and some of the corniness and when they put out the initial like bust of the tattoo and they retired his jersey it was everyone was like oh no don't do that but when i saw the the statue today it was perfect and i think that i myself you know broadly when when i'm thinking about everything to do with dirk's retirement and sort of the post you know, post-retirement celebrations, I think that every single thing the Mavericks have has done for him, about him, has been awesome. And I just I just wanted to say that out loud. Yeah, that's, you know, obviously Cuban, I know, is a big overseer of that, but the people working on the Maverick staff behind the scenes, some of them that we know personally, yep. that work very hard to make these really elaborate productions and ceremonies. I mean, they, they work really hard. I mean, they put the time into it, and it really shows. Um, yeah. I mean, the last, what? It, so Dirk's last home game, the Jersey retirement today. I mean, they're all 10 out, based, 10 out of 10. No, no notes. Just yep. keep doing that. Perfect. It's really, really impressive. I mean, yeah. one thing that I, I mentioned is it's like, I don't really know a lot. Like I, sports statues do not jump into my brain. There's two that do. The Michael Jordan one and the Shaquille O'Neal one, interestingly enough. Mm-hmm. And the Shaq one's really interesting. And if you, you don't remember what it looks like, um, it's basically him um, dunking. And I don't really know how they did it this way. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. It just shows it. It just reminds you of how much force this guy played with. And so when you look at the statue, it's like, oh, this is awesome. And then you, you think about what what Dirk Nowitzki evokes with the the like the fadeaway is just the thing you think of. And they nailed it. I heard some people saying it was a little bit odd. Like some of like some of the angles is not ideal, but it's like, I'm looking at a photo of this and it's like, all right, that's like, I cannot wait to go see it in person. I'm now more annoyed that I didn't go see it today. Um, <laughs> if that makes sense. And yeah. it's, it's, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I find myself delighted in the, about the whole process. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. There, I mean, you can nitpick, some, you can nitpick almost anything you want to, um, but the thing that I think both me and you, we both commented on this in the Slack, it's huge. <laughs> like, Okay, so mi- that's why I want to see it in person because it yeah. looks huge. Looks, yeah, it and looks huge from the photo. I think it really must be, which to me makes it all the cooler. Right. Because 
there, there's like an element of this to where I think those of us who really love Dirk are sort of worried that as years go by, and you can already see this with people. I saw like just odd comments where it's like, why are people celebrating him getting in the Hall of Fame? He's just a tall guy who could shoot. It's like, nah, no. Dirk just decided, you know, we, we'll talk about Dirk more in the future and we will just, he's that important to basketball and to Dallas basketball. And I just, I don't know. I think, I think they've really done right by him in a way that was really impressive. And, you know, we always worry kind of rightfully about Luca and his future, but I think the way he has been present for how they've handled Dirk is not something to hand wave is what I'll say. Oh no, for sure. I bet you there's some thinking about that going into how they prepare these events uh absolutely and then you know yeah what can you say it just helps helps you know lucas seeing seeing these accomplishments and it's really nice you know then you get the quotes about him talking luca appreciates loyalty that's the thing that the slovenian who joined our show say over and over is that he is loyal i don't know i don't know how everybody can speak to that but i do think Given some of the history, historical stuff he's been involved in, he, even for a younger guy, has at least a broader sense of why history matters. So I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of feeling a little bit uh, overly nostalgic, pre nostalgic. Hell, I don't know what you want to call it. But <laughs> it was, it, it was a fun thing. And then we get out and, and, you know, just to transition into the game. LeBron James came out and promptly smacked the Mavericks right <laughs> in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This was a perfect, another perfect Mavericks discourse game. Uh, mm. People, people mad about the first half, and then people mad at the people that are getting mad because they end up winning. I mean, it was just, I mean, this was the Mavericks make threes and they win game, which well, has been we good gotta trends. Give, we got to give some credit to the Lakers because I thought they yeah. took advantage of Luca's bullshit in the first quarter, and what I mean by that is Luca's tendency to play way too slow to get the ball past half court with 16 seconds left in the, on the shot clock, they would send a double at him by the time he's kind of advancing up to the, about the third mark of the court. And at that point, LeBron is playing backline defense. And so Luca had two early turnovers and it got him in his kind of second guessing his own decision-making. And with LeBron sitting on the back corner of where he normally threads a cross court pass, Luca stopped making that pass. Luca basically made the next available one. And then after that, it was ball rotation, ball rotation, open shot, brick. Over and over yeah. and yeah. over. I mean, that first quarter was horrendous. Jason Kidd ended with a lineup that was Luca Doncic, McKinley Wright, Davis Bertans, I think, Dwight Powell, and um, Theo Pinson which yeah. is a war crime. I yeah, the, fir- even- <laughs> the first half, I think, uh, you know, our buddy Nick uh, locked on Mavs. I think he responded. It was like kid was playing his same, like, ro- like assuming like everyone, like he was playing the same positions and the same spots, like the same rotation. Like he wasn't increasing anyone's minutes in the first half. He was just yep. like, okay, this is when Reggie Bullock comes in, or this is when, you know, Dorian comes in or whatever, and the, but Dorian's not here. That's Theo Pinson. It's not Dorian. Like, why is he? Why is he in the game? But that I, that only lasted in the first half, and you can tell by the starters' minutes totals that they kind of got away from that very quickly. And what do you know? The game kind of exploded after halftime. Well, uh, but, that yeah. third quarter, though, that's one of the craziest quarters I've ever seen. Ever? Like, yeah. national team. I, I had a, a family friend, guy who's like in his early seventies, not a basketball guy at the game today sitting in the lower bowl and he texted me after the game and said holy shit what was that and i was like (laughs) i I just i said i could i don't even know where to begin with you because it's such a they scored 51 points in the quarter went nine of 12 from three and really the three you know traditional basketball enthusiasts will tell you you need to work inside out the mavericks work outside in (laughs) <laughs> yes, they do. Uh, that's what, wa- like, watching the this game, you know, because it's Christmas, so you're with family, you're with friends, or you're, you're talking with friends, uh, you're, you know, every, you know, that maybe don't watch the Mavs all the time. You're, you're on Twitter with a bunch of people that are watching a Mavs game because it's the only basketball game on, so everyone is watching the Mavs, whether they like it or not. And it's just very funny because so much in the first half was like, why – why does this team shoot so many threes when they don't make them? And I just kind of chuckled. I'm like, 
uh okay like just just wait just you know they're either gonna keep doing that and lose or it's gonna change and they're gonna win and it changed and it's like that's the team man like uh, it's just so funny like i've i had a really close friend i watched the or one of the warriors uh, mavs western conference finals games with and he maybe watched one mavs game this year he's not a huge basketball fan but he's from you know he's from dallas and he you know he'll watch them when they're in the playoffs and he's just like why does this team shoot so many threes? Like, why don't they go inside? I'm like, no, like that's the team. They built the team of spot up shooters. So that's what they have to do. So sometimes it looks really bad, like the first half. And then sometimes it can look really, really, really good, which is the third quarter. Um, well, but props to the Lakers for also just not playing any defense whatsoever. After half Well, I, I mean, <laughs> you go look at their lineup and I, I oh, want to keep man. talking about the Mavericks, but Russell Westbrook was a negative 30. <laughs> yeah. Like his like his minutes were where the Mavericks feasted because everybody else, LeBron James is a plus two. Yeah. <laughs> and the like that shit's incredible. Uh, and so here's a good stat. Um if you could, the Lakers in the first, second, and fourth quarters combined out the score of the Mavs by twenty one points, and they lost by nine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that well, I'm gonna circle back to that fourth quarter again because that was just classic prevent offense from the Mavericks. But that third quarter, what was so interesting is this is where at halftime, you know, I, I saw Michael Wilbon, who is I I like, you know, historically important journalist for ESPN, just a really like bit of a relic at this point to be perfectly candid, because he just doesn't watch basketball. I don't care what he says, he does not watch basketball. I've heard I've heard him say repeatedly on shows that Luka Doncic like does not make the Mavericks better. And that third, that first half was so bad that the entire group of people in the ESPN halftime show was like, Mavericks got to get Luka some help. Like (laughs) what is going on? And it's just, you know, it's, it's the same shit we talk about, but from a national level from people who had really seen an extreme version of that. And then what I find so interesting is that that third quarter comes out, the Lakers keep doing the same thing. LeBron did, or I'm sorry, Luca did the same thing where he made the correct straightforward pass. There were no crazy passes until after they had blown back and taken the lead. It's just ball rotation, ball rotation, bucket. And his ability to stick with the process, I think is really, really respectable because you could tell he wanted to do more, but the Lakers just wouldn't let him. That was and and I wrote in the recap. I I don't know if you you have bothered yeah. to take a look at my recap, but I I said that that you know doubling Luca is your best defensive strategy, I think by and large, but you're also essentially gambling against time because right. give Luca a long enough rope, he's going to mess like he's going to figure it out. In this case, I don't necessarily think he figured it out as much as we just saw the teammates like hitting, hitting wide shot. wide <laughs> open shots. Yeah. Right, exactly. So then that's the thing with doubling is teams are just playing, especially if you're a team like the Lakers, who are bad. You know, they were 13, 19 entering this game. No Anthony Davis, like they were going to lose this game uh, in all, you know, by all accounts going into it. Like the you see the bad teams do this a lot where it's just like, okay, we're not going to win a straight up basketball game against y'all. So we're just going to gamble that if we just double Luca, we're going to gamble that y'all just have a 25% from three shooting night and hope we win. And, Which, and if we, don't, we, we lose, like that's kind of what some of these bad teams that don't, that can't guard the Maverick straight up or can't guard Luca straight up. That's just kind of what they do. My <laughs> buddy, Dave DeFore from the athletic said, this team absolutely has an O for 27, three point night in them. Oh, <laughs> Reference, yeah. Referencing the rockets in the Western conference finals several years ago. And I, I think it's the case. I mean, it, it the post show was interesting that I, I did the the Spotify live where you had everybody was pretty just pleased as punch that they won, but then it's just you know with the people that are hardcore enough to do this, I, I sort of think we're all watching the game in a similar way, which is not always like healthy for discourse because it means you get into an echo chamber. But you could tell there are still people like irritated where it's just like what, like why does it have to be this way? And the answer is it has to be this way because this is the way they've constructed the roster and. I the further we get away from the Western Conference Finals run, the further that I think the Mavericks really didn't understand that they had that that third heat Jack Donaghy talks about in the Thirty mm-hmm. Rock Finals, where Spencer Dinwiddie was the third heat, Jalen Brunson and Luca were the first two heats that made everything work together, and Br- and and Spencer added that extra oomph, and now they just don't really have that. 
I mean, it was it was really painful and wild to me that McKinley Wright, no disrespect, two-way player for the Dallas Mavericks, is playing significant minutes on Christmas Day. Part of that is injuries, but part of that is this team build because they need ball handler, and he's <laughs> he's not a bad ball handler. Yeah, I mean, he's playing because Kemba can't play. I mean, and they signed a guy that doesn't have a good knee. Poor like, Kemba. Like that's part, yeah, I know. That's not I mean, he's already fault. he's already done. Like, yeah. I hope he's not done, but it's just it's like yeah. when you play a guy 42 minutes. I looked at his and I looked at his uh, net uh, his Knicks box scores last year where he really started to go awry, and that was like it was after they played him like 40 minutes one. Night. And he scored like 40 points, and everyone was like, "Holy crap!" And then, and then, it's then he like, just oh. never never had it again. And that I really hope that's not the case with him. But you know, with this game tonight, it was you know it's Reggie Bullock somehow still a negative eight despite four of seven from three, but there were some easy makes, some good makes, you know, we've not talked about Christian Wood who on the day that in, you know, Adrian Wojnarowski just flat out tweeting what, you know, Christian Wood's agent probably sent to him um, that on the day that Christian Wood is eligible to sign a four-year contract extension worth $77 million. He scores 30 points, grabs eight rebounds, dishes a career tying high seven assists, has four steals and two blocks. And you know, I'm, it's Christmas. I'm gonna let him. I'm gonna let him brag because that was a hell of a performance from Wood. <laughs> yeah, I mean the numbers with Luca and Wood are not going anywhere. Like they're they're still really good, even the little rough patch where they lost three out of four. I mean, they like we are deep enough into the season now where those numbers are not fool's gold. I think um, yeah. maybe they might. You know, and when I say this, I'm talking regular season basketball, so I don't want anyone to be like. Luca and Wood could could like rip through the playoffs. Like I don't know about that yet, but I mean, in terms of just regular season basketball, getting through a long, a long NBA schedule, I mean, it's seemingly clear that those two can can do some things together. And and, and you know, maybe the defense isn't always consistent, but man, I mean, they're offensively, there's they're they're a perfect match really right now. Uh, maybe not perfect. That's probably too strong a word, but I'm just. Just saying, like, we can't ignore this anymore um, in terms of, like, how good Luke and Wood are. We talked about it when Wood wasn't starting and playing, like, mm-hmm. weird minutes. And, and now he's finally starting, and it's still – they're still producing, so. It's just uh, – it, you yeah. can clearly tell it chafes kids' sensibilities. Not Wood, but the concept. Because he wants to play a defense-first basketball team, and they just never have had the horses this year, even if they had similar, you know, much of the same roster. So when they would pull Wood at six minutes in the fourth and go to their kind of defensive lineup where you hope that Maxi can hit a three, and he just doesn't, and just doesn't, and, and plus they're giving, like, they're just slowly sinking into quicksand. It's maddening that it took injuries to get to this point. Right. But I mean, with Pal healthy, he's still starting. So I don't. They're not going back to it because they're not. I mean, Maxie's done. So. I'm glad about that. I'm well, yeah. not that Maxie's done. I'm glad right, that right. they're not going so, back to it. Sorry, sorry, I added that Maxie's done right when you were saying that about yeah. Woods. I kind of set you up with a grenade. But yeah, <laughs> uh, I just yeah, that's how it's going to be. And you know, there's probably some people that are like, oh yeah, of course Christian Wood has a great game against a bad team without Anthony Davis. And it's like, look, like. The team was 15 and 16. Like they're they, they just need to get win. It, like it doesn't matter anymore. Like this is advertiser content brought to you by Frito Lay. Hello, I'm Chip Murphy here to get you ready for the big tournament. Tonight we'll break down. We break down who will be cutting. Cut. What are you two doing? Sorry, Chip. Prez here got his feathers ruffled when I told him Ruffles has zero chance of winning the title. And I was letting Dip know that she is not taking into account Ruffles' iconic ridges. Guys, it's March. We have to start talking about the tournament. We are. It is the 2023 Frito-Lay Snackin'. We're talking about big-time matchups between Cheetos, Smart Food, Lay's, Sun Chips, and more. Just head to the Frito-Lay Snack Bracket and vote for your favorite chip, pretzel, or dip for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. This sounds great. Keep up the good work. Just go to Frito-LaySnackIt.SBNation.com. No purchase necessary. Sweepstakes ends 4-3-2023. Void wherever hit Here's worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at Frito-LaySnackIt.SBNation.com.
I 100% we're, agree with that. We're, pa- uh, we're past the point of style points with this team, right? They just need to get they it They needed a convincing and win. And if anything, that fourth quarter is a little alarming because you build up a 20-point, a 19-point lead heading, heading into the fourth. And within 10 minutes, it was cut to, or I'm sorry, within uh, 90 seconds, it was cut to 10 points. And the Mavericks responded, kept responding. You know, there's a lot of people in the post-game show were like really irritated that that the starters piled up this many minutes. And it, I said, did you see how quickly they the Lakers scored? Yeah, like, look at the bench. Had... Like, you want more McKinley, right? You want more? No, this like, is <laughs> like, what are you talking it's about? It's gonna catch up to Dallas. Yeah. Let's be clear. You know, Josh Green, whatever is going on with his elbow, feels. It, I'm. It's disconcerting because they have said for f- six games now, however many he's missed, he's that close. he'll be back soon, yeah. and he's not. I, I don't well, know. I don't know. That's a little thing, but it's just these these elements of this add up. And when you play these bad teams right now, even if they're playing forty minutes a night, they just they're getting. It's not like there's a lot of back to backs. And I'm sorry, like Luca's young enough. It's Reggie could use the volume as we've talked about. You know, Tim still looks good, but Tim is a really peak athlete. Like he's thirty. He's not. You know, the only one I'm actually worried about minutes totals is Spencer. But Spencer seemed to put in so much work in the offseason, you know, to get his his cardio up. He's looked good. Like, it, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm i kind of talking in circles at this point. It's just this is this is sort of what if the Mavericks are dead set on really making some sort of playoff push, then this is what's going to have to happen. Style points, like you said, are out the window. Yeah. And especially like, again, the starters put a lot of minutes like, I mean, that's that's the only guys they have. Like they're missing they're missing three of their top six players. Like the starters are going to play a lot of minutes. I'm sorry. Yep. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I mean, I'm not trying to say like, Hey, it's great to get out scored 40 to 30 in the fourth quarter when you have a big lead. Like that's not ideal, but also you still won by nine. Like I yeah. just, you know, the big thing was they lost that game to Minnesota uh, and they go 15 and 16. And you're like, okay, they have to be like, they have to be a couple games over 500 through this next stretch. You know, Houston, Los Angeles, Knicks, Houston, San Antonio, Houston. Like, they have to take care of business in these games. You do it however you can. Like, it does. It, it, like you said, like it just doesn't matter anymore. They just have to win these games because the alternative, if they drop any of these games here, like you're playing Boston, you're playing New Orleans, you're yep. playing the Clippers. Like, you know, this this is going to be easily the softest part of their schedule all season. And they just, pretty much they have yeah, to get pretty much the rest of the way. Yeah, because it's like you look at, you know, the fact that they haven't played the Kings at all. Yeah, and they're it, a feisty team, I mean, for sure. Good at this yeah. point, and there's just they play Memphis three times in March when Memphis is going to be going for the kill because they want to be the number one seed. I mean, there's just there's no easy path ahead, and the Mavericks are going to have to figure it out themselves. And I, you know. I, the Luca discourse for me has kind of veered into weird territory where I feel like people are sort of reflexively, you know, I said he was really bad in the first half and I'm really irritated about the free throws, but I thought he mostly just, he gave what the Lakers defense or he took what the Lakers defense gave him, but I, I don't know. To, you got to have somebody step up at some point. So when you see Tim play well again, and Tim did play well, and really, I, I think Tim deserves extra credit for the fact that LeBron sort of put him. Yeah. Like LeBron was very mean to him for Timmy <laughs> to somehow also have twenty six points. Yeah, um, for sure. Just, just please, please, his punch about that. Um, fun fact: uh, the Lakers made six total field goals in the third quarter. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. also made six. Ooh, that's so. good. Do we do we yeah. read into Frank Nilakina not playing? Oh yeah, for sure, right? I mean, what do we read into other than the fact that he like we know he sucks? Like, but what did those four t- horrendous turnovers in one quarter like open kids' eyes? Like, what maybe? What do we but think I, it looks like. Did you see this? I'm. I mean, I'm looking at the box score now, but the box score is saying it wasn't coach's decision; it was left knee soreness. Is that now? It says left knee soreness. Earlier today, it said coach's decision. Oh, okay. So we'll okay. we'll have to. I guess let's wait another game because I have to imagine they're still. You know, unless Josh Green. You know, unless some of these guys come back. I mean, if Dorian and Green come back the next game, then he would be out of the rotation anyway. anyway. Right. But if those guys miss this next game. And he still doesn't play, and we don't really hear anything about injuries. And like, let's just maybe wait and see. Not but to I be, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if he is 
out of the rotation after yeah. what we've seen the last couple of games, but who knows? Not to be Mavs Twitter, but I did think it was a little weird that Jaden Hardy didn't get any playing time. I wonder if he was quote healthy unquote. Oh yeah. Yeah. Back stuff is not something you fuck yeah. around with. Yeah. I mean, he did play one minute. He did get into the game. So, yeah. I mean, if he was healthy enough to, to play in garbage time, you wonder why wasn't he healthy enough to play other spots? But I think, I mean, this goes back to what me and you were talking about. Jaden Hardy's not a point guard, and McKinley yep. Wright is. And I know, yep. like, Hardy is going to have has the better long term career outlook in the NBA. But, you know, Timmy and, and Reggie and Spencer can soak up the off ball, you know, kind of shooting guard spot. You know, they what they really need right now is a bat, is like someone that can run offense. And, and Jaden, for as good as he is, he's more of just like a kind of combo guard, more two guard instead of like a pure point. So, I know that's going to make Mavs fans angry um, because it's going to be like, well, what does he have to do if McKinley Wright can just jump over him in the rotation so fast? I I don't know, but I'm just saying that's probably why. Like, I think for Hardy to play, it would take injuries to like Bullock and and Hardaway or Dinwiddie. Like, it would take those guys missing time as opposed to who's missing time right now, like Kemba. He's basically their backup point guard right now in a way. So, I mean, that's maybe the reason. But, I mean, yeah, no one's going to. Mavs fans aren't going to be happy about that. And I, and I kind of get it. You know, you want to see too. the guy play. I do too. Um, I don't know. That's probably probably about all we need to talk about this game. They play the Knicks on Tuesday, which is going to be a a moderate referendum game. So the Knicks went on this long win streak. That's a total fucking facade. They were, teams were <laughs> shooting under 30% from three against them, including under 30% on wide open threes. Like, that's not good coaching. That's luck. Like, there's an out three point defense is still something analytics have a harder time with, but it's like, come on, come on. So, I I think that the Mavericks will just beat the shit out of the Knicks. I really, also, really do. Yeah. Also, it looks like Brunson picked up an injury in that game oh, today did against he? the Sixers. I think I saw our our, our Knicks guide, uh, Fred Katz. Huh. Uh, that would be disappointing. Some, something like that. So, we'll see. Well, um, what about so I'm gonna any 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 Christmas stuff to write home about any any good gifts you like? <laughs> um, my my wife got me some awesome shoes. They're this brand Wolf and Shepherd, which are like Gronk is the spokesman. Yeah, I know what those for. are. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Like they're a nice like oh these look nice, but they also are like kind of athletic. Like you wouldn't work out in these shoes, but they're like really comfy and like stretchy and easy to fit. But they also look nice. So. Uh, that's probably standard because I'm really bad. I don't buy myself clothes. I never yeah, do. That when you're so tall a, and have big feet, it's, hard, it's you just don't have the motivation have, yeah. to go to a store and you be are, like, "Oh, you, you don't have a, my size." You are just outside. Like you are maybe one to two. Like like Josh is. Josh cannot comfortably. Josh is such a tall man that like I'm sure getting on flights is hell for you. Yes, um, I always buy exit row. <laughs> <laughs> so I. I I will say like the clothes thing for me is something that at like midway through the pandemic, I was like, I, I I'm home. I'm going to be comfortable. Right. So from, I bought everyone and like a network, uh, you know, on Twitter, the ringer guy for our formerly ringer guy now does a lot of x-ray. He does mostly like pop culture stuff. He used to be like a Nick sports guy. Um, he was, he constantly like recommended this brand called Viore on his, on his um, podcast. And I finally just like went to it and, I looked at it, I was like, okay, this is preposterously expensive athleisure gear. This is annoying. I'm not going to get this. Then my wife bought me a pair of shorts, just kind of happenstance. And then I, like, since I spent so much money for other people at Christmas mm-hmm. buying Viore stuff, because it's just, it's, it's like some of my favorite stuff. But then my wife got me the Mavericks warm up jacket. I, for oh, yeah, years, that's stylish. Well, not only that, this is a little thing. Not the, the materials Nike uses are sometimes really amazing. And then other times like makes me like pull my hair out. Well, the, several years ago, five, six years ago, they invent, they came out with this like thing called like fly knit um, gear. It, I think is what it's called. Um, someone will correct me if not, but it's like, it's really breathable when it's warmer, but then also when it's cold, it's great against the wind. And I was mad. They weren't making a jacket this year because they made like, they make this fleecy stuff. And I'm like, we're in Texas. I don't need fleece when it's 45. I need fleece when it's 20. So it's like I was pissed because I, I wear these things like all the time. And now mine, my previous two seasons are so ragged. And then she <laughs> got me like the, uh, I didn't realize she did this. She got me the um, city edition one that they have that they like wore today. It's got like the green like collar and then the Texas on the, it just looks, it's, it's fantastic. I'm it so great. <laughs> so thrilled by it. And 
I'm not remotely like stylish enough to wear it, but I will like the city gear stuff. I just, they knocked it so far out of the fucking park after like two years of meh. It's just fantastic to see something like this, like that court uniform combo today. How great yeah. was that? Their whole Jersey set this year, I think is awesome All for the good. first time. Cause those we statement jerseys are this. great. Yeah. yeah. We never agree. Like our guy, Jordan is probably our most critical, like fashion guy. He didn't like the, um, the dark navy and black one as the but even once those are on i think they look great oh i love i love the state with the, the yeah. white lettering like those are those are really clean That's um, some good stuff yeah some really they good look stuff. good this year and i know every, Mavs twitter loves to make fun of the icon jerseys like the the, the normal blue road uniforms that they like to wear because they are their record when they wear them is awful but <laughs> i i still like those i mean those are the jerseys they won the title in so well our, uh, our guy david went to the game today and bought the dirk white i uh, like like 1999 oh, i those are love, great too. i love those, yeah, those and i get great. why they'll probably never go back to anything like that but i just i i, I love it it's it's my favorite but i mean i yeah. never thought cuban would go to anything blue and green because i think he wanted to erase that era yep. of mavericks basketball out of history so the fact that they're doing what they're doing right now that's I'll, a good point it, no, but it's reclaiming the history. And that's what right. I think is particularly cool. But yeah, and then my son, my son's at the age, he's six, he turned seven in March, but he's at the age between getting like stuff to where I'm just like, I miss Pokemon entirely. I'm a little too old for it. <laughs> so when he gets all this Pokemon stuff, I don't know what the hell any of this stuff is. I don't understand. Like, I love playing video games. I bought him yeah, Pokemon. Yeah, you did just miss that. I, I don't understand Pokemon Snap. I'm like, I tried to play it with him and I don't know enough about it. And it's like, then he ended up playing like one. Of, it was the previous Pokemon game, not the one that, that just came out, but the one before I got it on sale for, for, and he played that for like a couple hours today. But it's, it's like, I play so many video games when I can. It's like when it's playing video games with a seven year old or six year old, extremely difficult is what I'll say, because I have no pay. <laughs> like this will shock the crowd. I have very little patience. Um, <laughs> so it's hard to do. <laughs> But yeah, and then I, so tomorrow I, I plan to be spending most of my day with him building preposterously big Lego sets. Someone bought him the Infinity Gauntlet, like the the damn eighteen. It's like like a Lego oh, Infinity Gauntlet. It's like seven hundred pieces, and he's like, well, yeah, that's not them. even like a, that. That's like a collector's Lego set. That's not that's like the like, toy so, kids. Like the person who bought it for him, like, why are you doing this? Because <laughs> he's gonna build it and then immediately take it apart, which like drives me nuts. Anyways, no right. one cares about my Lego problems, but I think that. <laughs> To talk about it um we'll be back tuesday night and i don't think i'm gonna work very much next week so maybe <laughs> i'll just uh, putz around we'll be on here um there's a number of things up on the site you know i didn't really ask anybody to write anything today but we've got one we got a couple of things coming about dirk jersey or i'm not jersey uh statue thing um yeah just just a nice little day on the side i, I liked my recap even though i didn't write anything that was like you know mind bending so come mm -hmm. read that Hang out, uh, leave us a rating if that's your thing. That sort of thing really helps us. Um, we're coming up uh, close to the end of the year, which doesn't really mean anything for basketball season, but doesn't mean I'm not looking forward to it all the same. You got anything before we get out of here? No, nah, I'm good. Hope everyone had a good, safe holiday, and we'll, we're going to be back at it next week. Everybody go watch Glass Onion. That's my recommendation. <laughs> okay. Two, yeah, two and a half hours of indulgent chicanery that I really enjoyed. All right. All right, guys. We'll be back on Tuesday. Have a great rest of your three-day weekend, I hope.